quite a few people were very interested in how I built a Cloudflare worker to basically check the cursor change log every minute to find updates to cursor before anybody else knows about them. So the second that cursor published their update on the change log, I get a notification from Telegram telling me about all of the changes recapped by AI and it's all hosted on Cloudflare. So I thought I'd do a video on how you can do the same. We're going to do this in Claude code. So we're going to do it a little bit different to how I built this one. And we're also going to use Cloudflare D1 database instead of KV. KV was a little bit iffy and didn't quite work how I wanted it to. So we'll try something new in this video. So this is the change log that we're going to use with this URL here. And it's basically just got a bunch of, well, change logs. Uh, you have a, a date, a version number, all the content of the change log here in HTML. And then down at the bottom, there's a bunch of sections about the features of that change, but also patches. So this one's only got one patch here, but they released version 1.0. And then shortly after they fixed and improved some things with the background agent. So it's patch version 101. I want to know that. I want to know what the patches are as well as the new version. So if we go down to 0.5 here, we have quite a few patches and things that are changed as the cursor team are shipping these out. I want to know these because I want to a share them on, on Twitter, on social media. And also I just want to know for myself so that I can use the tool better. So this is what we're going to build. We can get rid of the Twitter page now. So we need to figure out how to do this and I'm going to use Claude code. So if we head back here to cursor, I have a empty directory. You can see there's nothing over here on the left. Now I've already installed Claude code. You can do that. It's very easy on their website. They have all the information of how to do it. I'm on a max plan, which means I'm paying $200 a month. And honestly, the usage you get out of this is it's insane. The, the value is incredible. So I highly recommend you do it. I'm also going to be using when you set up Claude code, you get a VS code extension as well. So you can use that, which I'm using. So I'm going to go command and escape, and that's going to open Claude code inside cursor. So I know this is a little bit meta. We're using cursor, but Claude code inside of cursor to create a change log tracker for cursor. It's a bit meta. <laughs> So for a good cause, we're trying to learn how to use Claude code and Cloudflare workers. So once you are in here, we're ready to go. I'm going to go back and grab the change log URL. First of all, I'm going to paste that in there and then we'll use voice to talk. I want to make a very simple Cloudflare worker in the current project directory, which is empty, that monitors the cursor change log URL to find any updates and sends notifications to my Telegram channel. This needs to check the change log every minute. It needs to store those entries in a Cloudflare D1 database. It also needs to send formatted notifications to Telegram when new versions are detected. Uh, and it should also convert the content from HTML into markdown format. So we'll need to store things like the version number, the date, HTML and I also want to be notified not only when there's a new version that's been added but also whenever a patch has been added as well to an existing version so we need to track both of those okay so that is our context we are now almost ready I think we don't need to give it much information other than that so we should probably say to it um Make sure to check the change log at HTML to make sure you find the correct elements. And then we'll let it go and do its thing. Okay, so the first thing it's done is create a to-do list for us. So this is going to be all the steps that we need to take to build this project. So the first one, like we said, is going to check the change log HTML structure to make sure it figures out how to actually find the data that we need. Then it's going to set the project up and any dependencies. It's going to create all the TypeScript types, which I have no idea about because I don't really code in TypeScript, but Cloudflare 
it's re got very good support for TypeScript and I have been using Cloudflare a little bit more. So um, I'm starting to understand the, the terms, at least if not the actual code, then it's going to pass HTML, turn it to Markdown. So it's easy for us to read. Then it's going to create the checker, which is also going to hopefully detect when patches are made as well to give us notifications for that. Then it's going to set up the Telegram notification sender, create the worker entry point, set up the database, configure the Wrangler file, and then set up a bunch of scripts to help us test it locally before we deploy it. Uh, so one thing in, in Claude code is that it will ask you to run commands like this. Um, you can run it in what's called sort of YOLO mode, which is like a dangerous mode that will just, it will just go through, through, through. You can leave it for an hour, come back and, and review the changes. But for this video, I'm going to do it sensibly. <laughs> So it's going to grab that and save it to a temp file so it can review the output. I'm going to allow that so it can read the file and check what's going on in there. Okay. And now we can see it's got all of this code from the page. This, I mean, this is like 99.99% Tailwind CSS classes. Okay, it's going to analyze it a bit more. It's finding article tags. Now I've obviously already built this in a slightly different way before. Um, and one thing with cursor, the version numbers, it's not consistent all the way down the page. Some of the really old stuff, it doesn't have the version numbers in the same place. So probably we're going to skip them. I don't think we need to go back to like 2023 and store data from, from really far back. We only really need the latest one or the last couple of months worth. So hopefully you can figure that out and just find the correct, the correct ones for the, the most recent changes. We don't need to go back years because no one's going to be, no one cares. <laughs> Things move too quickly and the cursor team ship too fast. So Okay, so now it understands the HTML structure. Time to set up the project. Okay, so it's now it's trying to make a directory, but it's also trying to make a directory that we're already in. So I'm going to quickly say, no, you've done that wrong. Uh, we're already in cursor changes. So you don't need to create a DIR to it. Uh, we can just create uh, source folder. I'm right. Well, thank you for that, Claude. I know I'm right. Okay, now we can run that. And this is going to set up the package.json file so we, so we can install all the dependencies that we need. And you're probably going to see that most of this video is going to be me just reading what Claude wrote because Claude code, it just keeps going. It's very, it's, it's one of the best agentic workflows that I've seen. Like cursor, it's, it's there, but sometimes there's a bit, it's a bit stop start with this. It can be very, very just ongoing, churning out the changes and you don't really need to have much interaction at all. Uh, there's been quite a few times that I've just left my computer and gone off for an hour and come back and just review the changes and gone. Yeah. Okay. That's good to ship. So this is setting up the script. I have no idea what any of this means, by the way. Um, I'm so new to Cloudflare uh, workers to Wrangler to D1 databases to KV. I have no clue how any of it works apart from just talking to Claude or O3 or any of the AI models inside cursor or in this case, Claude code. I genuinely don't know how it works, but uh, I, I can figure it out as I go along and I just chat and just vibe it. So, although Claude code looks a little bit more sort of techy because you've got the command line and obviously it's spitting out things and you've got code on the left hand side. It's you, we're still vibe coding, we're still doing it through chat. And once you can give it enough context, it will just go and go and go and I put a post out yesterday, I think it was, 
about how you can spin up sub agents and or run this in multiple tabs at the same time and you can be doing multiple things so it's uh it's pretty powerful stuff and it's only going to get better and hopefully it'll push cursor forward as well so they can do the same okay so now it's on to the html parser with markdown conversion so we can just sit back and wait while the this changes from creating to whatever it's going to change to next while we're just letting it cook i really like how it's got the timer and also the number of tokens used as well maybe towards the end of the, the project you might see over here that it, it tells us how long we've got left before we run out of context and you can basically condense it down to start again and it just creates a memory or like a recap summary to pass on and then it just erases the the context window it doesn't always work as well as i would like if i'm honest but hopefully again these things will improve the more people are using them okay so now it's building an update checker i haven't even i've got an empty file here I guess I could just go command B over here and see that we do have some files. It is building stuff. Uh, but again, we don't need to see it. We can just let it work in here and then test it ourselves in a sec. Okay, so it's still creating. I guess probably what I could do while this is happening is go and find my telegram keys so we can add them into it's going to need need them in a sec i guess so we can actually send notifications to telegram okay so it's saying that the checker update checker with patch detection is complete it's moving on to telegram notification sender so i am going to go over and find my telegram keys which i think i have in another project somewhere okay now it's creating a work at entry point but it hasn't actually i'm i am going to have to ask you in a minute how we actually set set these keys up i know but for the purposes of people who are trying to learn how to use cloudflare i'm going to ask this to help us with it okay database schema so it's going to create the table where we're going to store the change logs with a version number date title whatever whatever else we need a hash i'm guessing that's to check whether or not whether or not the content has changed so we can update it or not Okay, so now it's setting up Wrangler, which is a file that I don't even know what Wrangler does. I, I assume it's something to do with just like setting up the connection from the worker to my Cloudflare account. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. Okay, that's going to do a test passing script, which I assume means we can test locally and do a quick call to the changelog URL from cursor just to make sure that we're getting the right information before we start saving things to the D1 database. Okay. So you can see down here now context left until auto compact is 38%. So when that gets to zero, it's going to automatically compress the context into a summary, which in pa on paper sounds great it sounds like it's like with cursor when you you can summarize into a new chat but it doesn't always capture the context very well so ideally we'll get this done before then uh what are we doing here okay it's making some kind of uh, deployment script yeah that's fine i'm guessing this so we can set everything up with one just by running one command So one thing you can do as well, it's still doing stuff here, but if I send this in here now, it's actually queued up that message. So when it finishes what it's doing, the message that I sent before will go in. And one thing that I love about this, because in cursor, if I type something and hit send and then go, oh, I forgot to mention something, I have to cancel it and send it again. With this, I can just send it and it will just get queued up and then the agent will pick it up and go, okay, yeah, I can do that. Okay. So to add your telegram keys for local testing, edit the dev vars file, replace your bot token with your actual token. Uh, you'll have to figure out how to do this. You just have to find this bot father account on telegram and it actually just gives you, it helps you set up a bot basically and it gives you an API key and stuff. Um, 
there's there's probably tutorials on how to do that it's pretty simple okay so i've secretly done that so what do we need to do next okay log into cloudflare and get an account id okay so that's asking me if i want to log in i guess i do Just opened up in a new window over here, which you can't see. Okay, I'll allow. Okay, so it knows that I'm logged in. Has my email address. Great. Okay, it's just going ahead and creating the database. Fine. Okay, so it set up the database and now it's deploying it. I haven't done anything yet just going to deploy this to Cloudflare with MPX Wrangler deploy. But then I want to test it locally before we test it live. Okay, so it's fully deployed this and it's already initialized the database with 156 change log entries, uh, which is great, but it means we can't test it until cursor <laughs> add a new one. So it was supposed to do it locally, but it just decided to cook and publish it live and just deploy it immediately. So ooh, let's just roll with it. Um, we need to test the Telegram notifications. So can you delete the entry with the highest version number to see if the uh, scheduled job runs to add it back and notify me. It also published the keys. I didn't show them obviously because it's my keys, but it did publish those to Cloudflare D1 as well, or to the worker, I should say. Okay, so it's found version 0, 1.0. It's gonna delete it. And then I don't want it to do anything. There's a check that will manually do it, but we want it to automatically happen. So in theory, in a minute, I should get a notification on Telegram. And there it is. It's actually added it directly to my Telegram channel. New cursor update, version number, the date that it was found, uh, or the published, I guess. What is the date today? Yeah, date that it was published by cursor version number, title, all the information. The entire change log is here, including patches at the bottom as well. Uh, ideally, and something I did in my original uh, version of this was that I had AI summarize what had happened, what, what the, the change was, what the content was. I'm not gonna do that in this video because we're already quite long into it. But if you really want me to, make sure you comment below and tell me and I will do it. Uh, but that actually went much smoother than expected. I was expecting more back and forth. It didn't even try to test it locally. We had did a bunch of local testing scripts that it just didn't run. It just skipped through them and went straight to deploying it. So, um, and we still got 29% context left, which is great. Uh, so as you can see, it's built the entire project over here on the left without me ever even looking at a code file. 